I am excited to show you this. The Flight Test P40 is finally out and I get to build one today. One of the reasons why I'm so excited to build this is because most Warbird RC airplanes that you get are pretty challenging to fly. But the flight test designs, we design them, I don't design them, to fly like trainers. And because I'm new to the flying aspect of the hobby, I get to fly a Warbird as one of my first planes. Now, if you're not familiar with our flight test planes, this is what we call a speed build kit. It's laser cut, water resistant foam board, and it's a simple fold together design. So with a little bit of hot glue, you fold this up in a three dimensional shape and you get an amazing airframe. Buying our kit supports us so that we can create more amazing content, but we also give out free plans. If you wanna spend the time cutting out all of the plans by hand, you're free to do that. We also have free build videos that walk you through step by step of the process so you can have success building your airframes. Hey guys, welcome to the flight test. I'm Andrus and today I'm gonna to show you how to build the FTP40. I noticed Alex was putting together this plug and play plane in the other room and the plane looks sweet, but I'm having a bit of a competition with him because I have a feeling that it is going to take him around the same amount of time to get that plug and play plane assembled and ready to fly as it is for me to get this P40 built and in the air. We'll see how this goes. I love the build process and I've been building things ever since I was a kid. I've built balsa wood kits. In fact, that's what I use for my science fair experiments in middle school. And of course, I've also built a lot of movie props being a filmmaker. One cool project I got to do on one of my films is to recreate the interior of a C-53 Skytrooper to help raise money for its restoration. You can check out that film on my website as well as all my other films. And I have a new film that's going to be coming out in the next few months. My website's Jeremy jeremyandrewdavis.com and I built this website using Wix. I've been using Wix for years and I've really loved the platform and Wix actually reached out to us and it was perfect timing because we needed to start a new drive on website. We recently created a new YouTube channel drive on for all of our RC car content and Wix enabled us to create a website for it from the ground up. Wix is a website building platform that allows you to create highly professional really sweet looking websites using simple drag and drop tools. It's really nice for people who haven't built a website before because it walks you through the entire process step by step, very similarly to how we do our flight test planes. With Wix, you can create a website for virtually any purpose, to build a business, a personal brand, a portfolio, they have hundreds of templates. They have a free option. Wix also has a lot of creative tools through apps that you can put in to allow you to have a store, e-commerce, music, hotels, events, you name it. If you're looking to build a website, I highly recommend Wix as a longtime user myself. We have a link in the description below. Clicking that link helps us out as well. So big thanks to Wix and let's get back to the build. As I'm building this P40, I noticed something cool. Most of our planes are fold together. They're very simple and beginners who have never built anything can easily follow the instructions to build this plane. But we recently released our first master series plane, the Corsair, which is a mold together plane and it's much more challenging to build. The P40 is fold together, but it does have a couple of molded sections. So if you're looking for a plane to kind of try out what it might be like to do a master series, the top formers of the fuselage will give you a little bit of a taste of what it might be like to build the Corsair or our future master series designs. One of the fun things I like doing when I'm building an airplane that's not a fantasy design is actually looking up the history of that airplane. And I wasn't actually all that familiar with the P-40 before I started building this. It's not the most iconic plane of the war, but it was actually the third most produced Allied fighter after the P-51 and the P-47. And the crazy thing about this is the plane was actually designed in 1938 and it saw action till all the way through the end of the war. One of the reasons why this plane was produced so heavily is it was a very inexpensive design to manufacture. The plane cost roughly $45,000 to make in 1944 dollars. Because it was an older design, it didn't have as much power and speed as some of the later designs, so it wasn't used as a high altitude fighter, but over 200 Allied fighter pilots from seven different nations became aces flying the P-40 with at least 20 
double aces. It's a really cool airplane to learn about its history, and I definitely recommend watching some YouTube videos to learn more about this cool plane. One of my favorite parts of the build is putting the fuselage and the wing together, and you have a completed model now, it's just about getting it in the air. The only thing I have left to do now is put electronics in it, and it looks like Alex is pretty close to the same point in his build, so this is gonna be close. E40 is done. Now I took all of the footage of my build process from opening the package all the way to right now, ready to fly, and I looked at the runtime. Then I took all of Alex's footage from building the RV8, which if you haven't checked out our video on that plane, go to our tech channel. We do a full review of it. It's a really cool airplane. We'll have a link below, but I took all of his footage and I laid all of that out, took out all the dead space, and it took Alex one hour and 16 minutes to get the the RV-8 out of the package, put together, and ready to fly. And it took me to get to this stage one hour and six minutes to be ready to fly. Now, I am gonna throw a paint job on this so that it looks as sweet as our Corsair so we can fly them together. I will say if this is your first flight test plane that you're gonna build, it will probably take you closer to the three hour mark. Because I am an experienced builder, it took me less. So as you build more of these kinds of planes, the faster you'll get, and you'll be able to put one together as fast as you could a plug and play plane. Minus of course the time that you'd put into a pretty cool paint job. Alex brought out these paint pens for me and I really liked using them for a down and dirty impressionistic style paint job. I've been really getting into enjoying the process of painting more than what I used to where it was all about the end product. Though the lines aren't really precise, I've really enjoyed the journey of making something that's truly me. These paint pens made doing the detail work that much easier. Oh, and paint tip, essential oils, especially orange oil or any citrus oil, really do an amazing job to take paint off of your hands without being toxic like using something like turpentine. All right, with that, I'm done with the paint job and uh, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. This looks really cool. There's only one thing left to do and that's uh, chuck it in the air. All so right. it is sprinkling and I have not flown since the last time you saw me flow, flow? Flow, you always be flowing. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but you know, I've been making videos for you guys so I don't get out much yeah. to fly. A lot of people think that we just spend all day just flying, which would be sweet. But in reality, Jeremy's working hard, we're all working hard. So the big difference between this and the Tiny Trainer video, which you may have watched, if not, we'll put a link to the video below. This is a four channel plane compared to the three channel traditional more trainer kind of glider feel. So this one has ailerons, so it's gonna be a little bit more axial on, especially on the roll axis, you're gonna be able to bank and, and then yank. yank. That's what a lot of people do. When you're first starting out, you don't need to worry about getting the rudder in there. As you become more experienced, then you can start mixing the rudder into your turns and just doing nice coordinated turns. But for now, you can just bank and yank pretty easily with this plane. Nice, and again, we're set up with Buddy Box, so if I get in trouble, Alex can take over controls. If he starts to get a little sketchy in the trees over there, <laughs> I let go and I pull out of it and then bring him back to safety. And by the way, we're using a 2200 milliamp three cell Lumineer battery, and they work great, especially for the Power Pack C. That's what we recommend for our Power Pack Cs. All right, man, you ready to launch me? Yep. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, Jeremy. <laughs> Look how sick it looks. Yeah. If you're new, have somebody made in your plane and also get it trimmed out. But dude, this is zero trim and it's flying like literally just as good, if not better than like an out of the box PNP plane. Nice. It feels great and it's beautifully calm day today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little nose up trim. And the cool thing about buddy boxing is when I trim the plane on my transmitter and then I give Jeremy control, it's going to transfer that trim over with him. So he has the same exact setup as me. We're gonna give you control and you'll immediately feel how much more precise and uh, also a little bit touchy this control is compared to the time train. All right, you ready? Gotcha, yeah. There you go. A little bit more throttle. There you go. Remember, just keep pulling back on the stick. That's gonna yeah. bring your nose up. You're doing good. Try to maintain your altitude. 
it's a mixture of throttle management and your attitude. So how high or low your nose is going into the horizon. And you're doing great right now, dude. Well, I got to say, flying when it's not 10 mile an hour and yeah. up Gus <laughs> is a whole lot easier. <laughs> so like the Warbird seems easier than the Tiny Trainer just because of the weather conditions. Yep. So if you're learning to fly, the biggest thing to pay attention to is your weather conditions. Yes. This is a lot of fun. It's a whole lot less anxiety ridden than my last flight. Yeah, and this should have more than enough power to go straight vertical. We're running this off of our Power Pack C. That coupled with this Warbird airframe, you're gonna have more than enough power to do high climb out. So if you get into trouble, having that extra power oftentimes uh, is a really good thing. And then on the flip side, it can also get you into trouble if you don't use the power properly. So. You're doing a great job, Jeremy. I gotta say, it is so cool seeing a warbird going through the air yeah, and me at the controls. It's totally it's, different it's than just very, doing a tiny trainer. Warbirds get everybody, and a lot of people, when they get into the hobby, uh, they go out and do what we don't recommend, typically, is to go out and buy like an out-of-the-box plug-and-play Warbird. But with our planes, the cool thing is you can do that because this, even though it has the appearance of a Warbird in the air, it has features such as like our under-cambered wingtips, and that actually gives it more trainer-like tendencies. So this flies more like something like an Apprentice or even like a, a, any kind of four-channel trainer while it looks like a sick Warbird in the air. What do you say I try to land it? You think you got it? All right, okay. bring it down and land it right here. While you're, you're, you have a nice approach set up. Turn it down, there you go. Back pressure very subtly, a little bit at a time. Back pressure. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> she wanted to keep flying, dude. <laughs> that was awesome! That was your best landing I think yeah. ever, dude. Dude, fantastic job. What an amazing experience. That wasn't exactly what I had expected. No offense. <laughs> no offense, but coming off the tiny trainer in that windy scenario yeah. to doing absolutely just perfect. I mean, that was Thanks, fantastic. Man. What do you say? Do you want to try a solo flight? Okay, I, I'll, yeah. You, yeah. you got it, this, brother. You got it, man. All right, I'll give you a little toss. You should have plenty of battery. Now do whatever you feel comfortable with. What I'm thinking now, Jeremy, what do you say? And I'll talk you through some basic aerobatics. All right, so Jeremy, you have full control. Now the thing when you're starting to learn aerobatics is you definitely want to be high. Altitude is your friend, as Josh says. Whoa. So now what you're gonna do while you're up there is nose down a little bit and then pop it up and then go full right or left and to do a barrel roll and then recover at wings level. Typically, it's always good to do it while you're going into the wind. So do it while we're going that way away from ourselves. Okay. So nose down. And, and then, then pull up, up and then all the way. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Nice. All dude. right. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay, barrel roll's pretty simple. That was a barrel roll, yeah. Now, I should mention, we talked about how good a trainer some of these classic flight test warbirds are, but they're also great at doing all your aerobatics, just like a real warbird. So it's a, it is a plane that you can truly grow with. The envelope on what you can do with these things is really, really large. Okay, so what else should I do? We'll try a loop. Okay. We'll try a loop. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do here for a, a loop is, same thing, a little bit nose down, uh -huh. And then you're gonna wanna go full throttle and do a straight up climb and then just keep pulling back and you'll, you'll bring it all the way around in a loop. Oh, dude, that was perfect. Nice. That was awesome. great. That was great, dude. Cool. Textbook loop right there. Oh my gosh. That was about as good as I've seen it. That was fantastic, man. That, those are the two basic maneuvers that most people want to try when they first start flying. You got your barrel roll and your loop, and you nailed it on, on the first try on both of them. Thanks, man. I'd say it's a success. First full solo without Buddy Box and first aerobatics without any help from the Buddy Box. Are you going to bring it in? Yeah. All right, here he comes. You can glide it all the way in. You shouldn't need any throttle there. There you are. Fantastic, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome, man. Thanks. I tell you what, I am a little bit jealous. I think I need to build a <laughs> P40 or a Mustang or something. Going through this process and just learning how to fly 
taking my building skills and putting them in the air is such an amazing experience and having friends to do it with. The hobby is amazing and it's very, very fun, but it the fun is maximized by like a hundred times when you go out and you share the experience with somebody else. We highly recommend finding somebody to go out and have fun together with. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so because we're doing fun builds like this. We're also making pigs fly, dropping <laughs> cars out of cargo planes and stuff like that. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go fly again, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs>